Are you saved? That's a question I have for today. Uh, during this chalk talk, what we're going to talk about simply is the gospel. We're going to talk about the gospel. Now, what is the gospel? Well, the word gospel, of course, means good news. Good news. And before you can really understand what the good news is, you need to understand what the bad news is. Now, here's the bad news, okay? Here's a case where you need to know the bad news first and then the good news. The bad news is that whosoever's name was not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life was cast into the lake of fire. That's in the book of Revelation, last book of the Bible. That's a book of prophecy. It lets us know what's coming in the future. And the thing that's coming in the future for most people is that they will be cast into a lake of fire. That's the bad news. Your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're cast in the lake of fire. Now, like I said, we're talking about the gospel today. So the question we should be asking at this point is what's the good news? What's the gospel? Well, the good news simply is, you don't have to go into a lake of fire. You don't have to go to the lake of fire. You don't have to be cast in there. You can get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. You say, how can I do that? Well, we'll have to get into a little more details in this video. But simply put, you can't get your name into the Lamb's Book of Life on your own. You just simply can't do it. You need someone else to help you get your name into the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, the reason your name isn't there in the first place is because of a nasty word that people hate to hear, and that word is sin. Because of sin, your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay? Because of sin, it may not appear at the judgment seat, in which case you will be thrown into the lake of fire. Now, what is sin? Sin is disobedience to God. Simply put, sin is disobedience to God. Okay? It's not always doing something, because the Bible says, to him that knoweth it is good, and doeth it not. To him it is sin. Okay? And that's God talking. God says, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, it is sin. So sin can be something you do, or it can be something that you don't do. Depending on the nature... But ultimately, sin is going to be disobedience to God. Okay? Disobedience to God. And so, we're all guilty of it. You say, I'm a pretty good person. I don't know that I would necessarily say I'm guilty of sin. Well, that's because you're considering God's standards. Okay? Some people try to say, and they claim to be Christians, when they say it, they say, I haven't sinned. In many, many years, I haven't sinned in five years or two years or 15 years or 20 years or something like that. They, they say, I, I haven't sinned in years. But the problem with that is they're looking at their own standards instead of looking at God's standards. Now, per God's standards, they absolutely have sinned. Uh, for example, if you've told a lie... You sin. The Bible says that liars will not go to heaven. They have their place in the lake of fire that everyone will be cast in. If your name's not in the Lamb's Book of Life. So if you've told a lie, your name's not in the Lamb's Book of Life. Which is where you need it to be if you're going to escape the fiery judgment of God in the lake of fire. You say, well, I'm, I'm pretty honest. You, you've never lied once. Okay, I'll grant that. I don't really believe it, but we'll just grant that for now. How about being respectful to your parents? Have you always been respectful to your parents? I doubt that. Maybe you think you have. I seriously doubt it. Have you ever looked at a member of the opposite sex, the other gender, with lust in your heart? Sure you have. You can't go to the store without seeing half-naked women on the magazine covers. Of course, you've committed uh, the sin of looking with lust in your heart. So is that really a sin? Well, Jesus said it's adultery of the heart, and adultery is uh, in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And Jesus said, if you look on a woman with lust in your heart, 
you have committed adultery. And of course, if you hate someone, you say, I, I'm not doing anything to them. I wish I could do something to them, but I haven't actually done anything to them. Well, that's still murder of the heart. Okay? So most people, if they'll be honest, they'll have to admit that they are a murderer and a liar and a thief. If you take a 16-minute coffee break instead of a 10-minute break, if you take an hour and five minutes for lunch, but I'm going to get docked for an hour, you're stealing the boss's time. And so a lot of people, if they'll be honest, they would have to admit that, yes, they have stolen something. So I think we've established the fact that no one's perfect, including the guy drawing this picture right now. No one is perfect. No one. So what do you do then as a result of not being perfect? Well, you need a perfect replacement you need a perfect replacement to take your place in sin and that's where the person i'm drawing right here comes in okay if you can't tell which hopefully you can this is a cross and i'm drawing someone hanging on that cross chances are you know the name of that person already that's jesus christ okay now i'm not violating any second commandment. I'm not trying to make an image of God here for you to worship. Don't worship this thing. It's just an illustration. But Jesus did go to the cross and die on the cross for your sins. Okay? The Bible says that he was guiltless. He was without sin. But he went to the cross to die for our sins so that we could be saved. Okay? The question then becomes... Have you accepted the payment? Some people are not accepting the payment, okay? I've been working on a, a video series as well, in addition to this, on debunking the sacraments, okay? Debunking the sacraments. And what that's about is showing that the Roman Catholic plan of salvation is a false plan of salvation. It's a false gospel. And the Bible says, if anyone preaches another gospel, that they are an abomination, so the Catholic Church is an abomination for teaching another gospel. The problem is Catholics aren't receiving the payment that Jesus Christ made on the cross for them. Instead, they're trying to merit their own way into heaven. Some people don't accept it because they don't think they're good enough to accept it. But the Bible says that now is a day of salvation. And so there's no waiting period that needs to happen. Some people say, oh, you got to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Before you can get saved. Well, that's not really true. You've got to find him as the Lamb before you find him as the Lord. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't say you have to make him Lord. It just says you call upon the name of the Lord. He's the Lord whether you believe he's Lord or not. Every uh, knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whether they like it or not, he's already Lord. So you don't have to make him Lord in order to get saved. You have to find him as the lamb first. But this lordship salvation people, they go to the extreme of saying you got to repent of all the sin in your life so that you can be good enough and cleaned up enough to get saved. That's simply not true. Now, what is the gospel? The gospel is that Christ died for sinners. He died. And then he was buried according to the scriptures. And then he rose again on the third day. According to the scriptures. So the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That's the gospel. Okay? The bad news is you're going to hell. The good news is you don't have to go there. How can you avoid going there and getting your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life? You have to fully trust in what Christ did on Calvary's cross to save you from your sins. Okay? In order for Christ to save you from your sins, you have to accept his payment. Stop trying to pay for your sins yourself. Stop ignoring this man. This man, maybe some of you ignore him. Well, oh, I'm an atheist. Or, well, maybe there's many ways of God. How do I know which one's true? Prophecy. The Quran doesn't have much of that. Look at the prophecies. And then look at the fulfillment of those prophecies in Jesus Christ and in world events. There's a lot of prophecies that I won't get into in this video. But if you are really concerned... You can look into these prophecies for yourself 
and you'll see that the Bible is true and that it can be trusted. And once you realize the Bible is true and can be trusted, you'll have to do what it says in order to be saved. And in our time, in the church age, in order to be saved, you have to realize you're a sinner. That's why I'm covering the bad news first. You're going to hell because you're a sinner. Okay? You've, you have disobeyed God, and even if you disobeyed Him just once, you are headed for hell. Just for one disobedience, even though we sin more times than we can count, if you've done it just once, you're headed for hell. Now, once you realize you're a sinner, then the next thing is to repent. And a lot of people are trying to throw repentance out because they think it's a work and they've got all confused. Repentance is just a change of mind in the scriptures about sin. You're agreeing with God about the sin. So you admit you're a sinner and you deserve to go to hell. If you've gotten to that point, you agree with God about the sin. You agree that you've offended him by looking at women that you're not married to with lust. You agree that you deserve to go to hell for that. If you're not on, on, on terms where you can do business with God, you can't get saved. So in order to get on those terms with God, you have to agree with them about sin. Once you've agreed with God about the sin, you put all your faith and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection, finished work of Christ to save you, and then he'll save you. The blood will be applied at that time. Now, what are some of the alternatives to getting saved? The only alternative is hell. That's the only alternative. If you're not saved, and you go to the grave rejecting Christ's payment for your sins, you will end up in hell for now. Then, the great white throne judgment will occur. Once the great white throne judgment occurs, you will appear before Jesus Christ himself. The man that hung on the cross for you is going to be the man, and God by the way, let me be clear on that. He's the God-man. He's not man. He wasn't just God. He wasn't just man. He was the God-man. That's a miracle in and of itself. But you will appear before that person of Jesus Christ to be judged for your sins one day. You will appear before the person of Jesus Christ. He's the one that died for you. And if you reject that payment, that when you see him, it won't be an act of love again. This was the greatest act of love right here. Now, you can either accept that and respond appropriately by getting saved, or you can reject it. And you'll be cast in the lake of fire if you do that. So, I want to go over it one more time because it's very important. Very, very important what we're talking about here. Okay? What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news that you don't have to go to hell. Okay? You're a sinner. You have to admit that. Come to terms with it. And once you realize and come to terms with the fact that you are a sinner, then you must agree with God about the sin. Okay? You must repent. And once repentance has taken place, then... Then, you put all your faith and trust in Christ. Nothing that you can do or have done, nothing that your church can do for you, nothing that intellect can do for you. There's a lot of people that are like, I just don't believe in Jesus or God or, or uh, I'm trusting something. You know, now, I was talking about Catholics, but they're not the only ones that have this problem. Muslims are trying to get to God by doing their own thing, praying five times a day towards uh, Mecca, their holy city, and all that. That's what they're trying to do to get saved, and that's not going to work out for them either. Okay? That is just not going to work out. Everything you're trusting in has to get you to heaven. Now, what if you're a Christian watching this, and you say, I have doubts. I've had doubts about my salvation. Well, it's very simple. All you have to do is ask yourself, what am I trusting in? That's the only thing that matters. What are you trusting in to get you to heaven? Do you believe that you deserve to go to heaven as a sinner? You say, yeah, I, I agree that I should go to heaven. Okay. What are you trusting in to keep you from going there? Right? Because if, you're, if you want to be saved, if you're a Christian, 
and you want to um, go to heaven when you die, you want to come to Christ, and you want to be saved, then that means you already understand you're a sinner in need of a Savior, and you already agree with God about the sin. The only thing left is, what are you trusting in? That's a simple question, and yet so many Christians get messed up trying to answer this question for themselves. They get so messed up and bent out of shape trying to figure out what is it, you know, that they want some sort of experience, right? They want the right experience. Well, to get the right experience, you got to serve God, and a lot of people don't want to do that in the Laodicean age. But ultimately, if you want the, uh, want the right feeling, you're going to have to get busy doing something for Christ. Okay? You've got to do something for Christ. So you get busy serving, you'll get the right feeling. If you don't do something for Christ, you won't have the right feeling because you're not right with God. Even if you're saved, if you're not obeying His commands, you're not going to have the right feeling. Okay? But you're not saved by feeling anything. No one ever told you to feel anything. You were told to trust in this here. Jesus Christ. His blood is what washes away our sins. So I've tried to make this video quick and simple because I don't want to complicate the gospel. If I go on and on and on about the gospel, there's a chance Satan could step in and complicate it. And so I hope you've understood this. If not, you can send us a message or comment below, and I'll try to get you more information and answer your questions. But ultimately, what is the gospel? The good news is you don't have to go to the place that you deserve to go. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to burn in the lake of fire. Jesus paid the penalty. All you have to do is accept the payment and repentance and faith. Thank you. God bless.